In the opening days of the Second World War, this was the face of the Blitzkrieg. The Panzerkampfwagen II, a 10-ton light tank armed with a 20-millimeter autocannon, it was never intended to be a frontline brawler. And yet, during the invasions of Poland and France, it formed the backbone of the German panzer divisions. It was fast, it was reliable, and against the ill-prepared armies of Europe, it was good enough. But its time at the top was brutally short. By 1941, the Panzer II was hopelessly obsolete. Its thin armor and weak cannon no match for the new generation of Allied and Soviet tanks. It was a relic of the early war, a symbol of a time when speed was more important than power. Five years later, on the same battlefields, America unveiled its own vision of what a light tank should be, the M24 Chaffee. And it was in a completely different league. It was not just an upgrade, it was a quantum leap in technology, firepower, and design philosophy. This is the story of two light tanks separated by half a decade of brutal, rapid wartime evolution. It is the story of a first-generation pioneer versus the state-of-the-art predator. To understand this matchup, you have to go back to the 1930s. Germany was secretly rearming under the Treaty of Versailles. Its new tank doctrine, the Blitzkrieg, envisioned by men like Heinz Guderian, required fast, mobile tanks to exploit breakthroughs and create chaos in the enemy's rear. The Panzer I, armed only with machine guns, was a pure training vehicle. The Panzer II was the next logical step, a stopgap measure pressed into service because the more powerful, purpose-built Panzer III and IV were not yet available in large numbers. Its design reflected this. The Panzer II was a small, 10-ton vehicle with a crew of three. Its armor was incredibly thin, a maximum of 35 millimeters on the front of the later AUSF F model, but most early versions had just 14.5 millimeters of face-hardened steel. This was barely enough to protect against heavy machine guns and early anti-tank rifles. Its main weapon, the 2-centimeter KWK-30 autocannon, was essentially an upscaled anti-aircraft gun. While its high rate of fire was effective against soft targets, its tiny shells were incapable of defeating any real tank armor it would face after 1940. The Panzer II was a product of a pre-war mindset, a stepping stone on the path to true armored warfare. By 1943, the U.S. Army had a serious problem with its own light tank. The M3 and its successor, the M5 Stuart, had been a vital part of the Allied arsenal. They were mechanically reliable and fast, but on the modern battlefields of Italy and the lead-up to Normandy, they were becoming a death trap. The Stuart's 37mm gun, which had been adequate in 1941, was now useless against the frontal armor of most German tanks and assault guns. Its tall, boxy profile made it an easy target for German anti-tank gunners, and its vertical volute spring suspension gave it a rough ride, making it a poor, unstable gun platform on the move. The reconnaissance units that used it were essentially forced to scout with a tank that could not fight for the information it found. The U.S. Army didn't just need a better light tank, they needed a completely new concept. The M24 Chaffee, initially designated the light tank T24, was a clean sheet design, the culmination of every hard lesson the U.S. Army had learned about armored combat. The design team at Cadillac was tasked with creating a light tank that had the firepower of a medium tank. First, the suspension. They adopted a modern torsion bar system, a technology the Germans were using on their Panther and Tiger tanks. This gave the Chaffee a much smoother ride, a lower, more stable profile, and better cross-country performance. Next, the power plant. The Chaffee was powered by two Cadillac V8 automobile engines paired with an automatic hydromatic transmission. This made the tank surprisingly quiet for its size, very easy to drive, 
and mechanically reliable, as the engines and parts were already being mass-produced for the civilian market. And most importantly, the main gun. This was the true revolution. Engineers at the Aberdeen Proving Ground developed a lightweight 75mm gun, the M6, adapted from the cannon used on the B-25 Mitchell bomber. It had the exact same ballistic performance as the main gun on the original M4 Sherman tank, but was hundreds of pounds lighter. For the first time, an American light tank had the firepower of a medium tank. It was a purpose-built, late-war reconnaissance predator. This is the most lopsided category imaginable. The Panzer II's 20mm autocannon fired a tiny, half-pound shell. According to German ordnance data, with its best tungsten core armor-piercing round, it could penetrate about 20 millimeters of armor at 100 meters. This was barely enough to threaten an armored car. Against the Chaffee's sloped front, it would have zero effect. The M24 Chaffee's 75mm M6 gun fired a 15-pound shell. Its standard armor-piercing round could penetrate over 70 millimeters of armor at 500 meters. It could destroy a Panzer II from any angle, at any conceivable combat range. In fact, it could penetrate the frontal armor of a Panzer IV, Germany's main medium tank, from over 1,500 meters. This isn't a competition. It's a complete annihilation. Verdict. An overwhelming, absolute victory for the Chaffee. The Panzer II was a box. Its armor was thin, vertical, and offered minimal protection. Later models had up to 35 millimeters on the front, but this was still vulnerable to almost any Allied anti-tank weapon it would have faced after 1940. The Chaffee, while still a light tank with only 25 millimeters of frontal hull armor, used that steel far more intelligently. Its glasses plate was sloped at a sharp 60 degrees, giving it an effective line-of-sight thickness of around 50 millimeters. Its turret was also well-sloped and presented a small target. While it was still vulnerable to dedicated German anti-tank guns, its design offered a vastly superior level of protection and a much higher chance of causing a ricochet. Combined with its three-man turret versus the Panzer II's two-man turret, which allowed for a dedicated commander, its situational awareness and survivability were in a different league. Verdict. A decisive victory for the Chaffee. Both of these tanks were designed for mobility, but they achieved it in very different ways. The Panzer II was light and simple, powered by a 140-horsepower Maybach engine, using a basic leaf spring suspension. It was agile and quick for its time with a top speed of around 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour. The M24 Chaffee was a masterpiece of automotive engineering. Its advanced torsion bar suspension gave it an incredibly smooth ride over rough terrain, making it a more stable gun platform on the move and dramatically reducing crew fatigue. Its twin Cadillac V8s and automatic transmission made it responsive and easy to drive. While its top speed of 35 miles per hour, 56 kilometers per hour, wasn't a huge leap, its cross-country performance and its quietness were vastly superior, making it a far more effective reconnaissance tool. Verdict? A clear victory for the Chaffee. The first M24 Chaffees arrived in Europe in late 1944 just in time for one of the biggest battles of the war, the Battle of the Bulge. They were immediately issued to reconnaissance squadrons of armored divisions, and their performance was a revelation. Unlike the Stuarts they replaced, the Chaffee could fight back. Its 75mm gun could take on German Panzer IVs and assault guns, and its superior mobility allowed it to outmaneuver the heavier Panthers and Tigers. While only a few hundred saw service in World War II, they earned a fearsome reputation. But the Chaffee's story didn't end in 1945. 
It became the standard U.S. light tank of the post-war era, serving with distinction in the Korean War. But its greatest legacy was its global proliferation. It was sold to dozens of countries around the world. In the 1950s, the French army airlifted disassembled chaffees into the besieged fortress of Dien Bien Phu in Vietnam, where they became the last line of armored defense. Some nations were still using the M24 Chafi as late as the 21st century. It was a design so advanced and so reliable that it served for over 50 years. So, which was the superior light tank? The question itself is almost unfair. The Panzer II was a first-generation tank, a pioneer of a new way of war. It was a brilliant design for 1939, perfectly suited for the Blitzkrieg campaigns where it faced weak opposition. But it was a stepping stone, a design that was obsolete by the time America even entered the war. The M24 Chaffee was the end result of five years of brutal, accelerated evolution. It was a late war masterpiece that incorporated all the lessons of the conflict. It was fast, reliable, intelligently armored, and packed the punch of a medium tank in a light tank's chassis. This is not a comparison of equals. It is a stark demonstration of the incredible technological leap that occurred during the Second World War. The Panzer II was the tank that started the War of Machines. The M24 Chaffee was a clear sign of the sophisticated, powerful, and modern army that would finish it. It was, in every measurable way, in a different league. What do you think? Was the M24 Chaffee the best light tank of the entire war? Let us know in the comments below. And for more deep dives into the machines of war, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.